Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In this particular video, we are going to take a look at what are blue chip stocks and also I'll be explaining if these are actually good investments as a lot of people believe. So this is what I said we'll cover. Before we start a quick look at the disclaimer which basically states that any information that I'm sharing with you is only for entertainment purposes. It is not any kind of trading or investment advice. If you plan to trade or invest your money, please get in touch with a certified financial advisor and understand the risks carefully before investing or trading with your money. A quick call out that you can follow the trades that I am taking uh, on my YouTube channel's community tab. So if you go to the community tab of my YouTube channel, the trades that I take, I basically post the details of those trades there. Even today I have posted a trade on Micron. So if you want, you can go and view those trades. Uh, usually people will share these trades for a fees. I am sharing these trades for free right now. So you can take advantage of that and hopefully you will find these useful in order to get my trades for free you can just go to my channel serene trading strategy and once you're on the channel home page then you can go to the community tab over here and here you can see that all trades are listed so till now i have posted 41 trades and some of these will show in the open status which means this is an active trade and i have still not closed this particular trade whereas some trades you will see will be uh, closed so these are older trades which have been these positions have been closed and uh, so we have multiple open and closed trades mentioned here on various symbols that i have taken and also uh, for the closed trades what was the return whether it was a profitable trade or a losing trade what was the annualized return how many days were there to expiry when i took the trade and actually uh, the trade was open for how many days all those statistics are mentioned here we also keep a track of the running loss or profit. So right now you can see this is a positive number. So there is a $4,052 profit till now. So if you want to follow my trades, you can follow this process and uh, hopefully you will find this helpful. So let's get into the video and let's understand what are blue chip stocks. So there's no single definition of blue chip stocks, but rather blue chip stocks are defined by certain characteristics and stocks which have more of these characteristics are referred to as blue chip stocks so whatever points i have listed here these are the usual characteristics that are uh, present in a blue chip stock but that does not mean that if a certain stock does not satisfy one of these conditions then it will not be considered as a blue chip stock for example one of the points here is payout of dividends so even a stock which satisfies the other conditions but doesn't pay out dividends will be considered as a blue chip stock so these are not hard and fast rules these are usually the characteristics of blue chip stocks and the more characteristics out of these that are applicable to a certain stock the more blue chip that company or that stock is but uh, you should use this definition in a loose way that this is not applicable uh, in an exact way because for example if a company is going through hard times then they may stop the dividends for a year or two years in order to uh, preserve the money and uh, use that money for bailing the company out of difficult times that doesn't mean that the company stops being a blue chip company if the issue is not with the company itself but with overall market conditions so with that out of the way let's look at each of the points that form the uh, main characteristics of a blue chip stock and understand uh, why blue chip stocks are favorites among so many people so first thing is that blue chip stocks are stocks which have uh, are basically companies that have existed for a long time so if you look at the examples that i've given here ibm walmart coca cola these are really old companies that have existed for tens of years and they have seen different market cycles the ups and downs but these companies have survived and over a period of time they have matured so the first characteristic of a blue chip stock is that these companies have been around for a long time the second thing is that they have good track record so blue chip companies are considered to be relatively safer investments and the reason is that these companies usually have a good track record if you look at ibm walmart coca-cola these companies are relatively stable their businesses have been doing well so this is not to say that there is no other competitor which can do better than them or these companies cannot have a some quarters or certain years where they face a, a slump but in general over a long period if you see these companies have done well so a good track record is usually one of the characteristics of blue chip companies then they are usually the leader in the sector or their industry and the reason for this is that if you look at the first two points these companies have existed for a long time and they have a good track record 
so if a company has been there for a long time and during this period it has done well obviously it is going to become a kind of a market leader or at least a leader in its own industry or its sector so if you look at all these three companies coca cola walmart and ibm these are always ranked amongst the top companies uh, in a particular sector so people who are monitoring the retail sector they will very closely follow the earnings report of walmart why because walmart is a huge huge company and it's kind of a market leader so whatever happens with walmart kind of represents what is going on with the overall retail industry so these companies are usually leaders in in their own space the fourth thing is huge market capitalization again this is evident that if a company has existed for a long time and it is doing well over a period of time their market capitalization has increased by a lot if you look at any of the examples that i have given all of these are multi billion dollar companies in fact their valuations are in hundreds of billions of dollars then the next point is that these companies usually have a huge market share a perfect example of this is coca cola so if you understand coca cola coca cola is almost present across the globe in all countries and they have a significant market share in almost all countries so coca cola is something which has existed for a number of years it has penetrated all the markets globally and this is another characteristic of blue chip stocks that they have a huge market share an extension of this is the next point which is that when companies are already this big that they have a huge market share then they cannot have explosive growth why because they have already captured the existing markets and their growth is usually related to the gdp growth of an economy or the population growth of the uh, country or the world if they are operating on a global scale besides that you cannot uh, look for explosive growth think about coca cola it's already selling in all companies so people will not all of a sudden start consuming double the amount of uh, coca cola products right so their sales cannot grow at a very rapid pace the growth will be related to penetration of uh, the market share from other companies like pepsi and others or it is mostly going to come from organic growth that means a generic increase in the population and then more and more people a certain percentage of those additional population will start consuming coca cola products so with blue chip stocks uh, they are most of stable companies but you should not be expecting explosive growth uh, extension to this point is the next point which is that these companies are less volatile so as i said these companies are big they have a huge market share so whenever there is a downturn in the economy let's say there is a recession or there is a temporary uh, a situation like a pandemic or something these companies are usually pretty stable and they are much less volatile than the overall market and the reason is because one these companies are very big they are kind of too big to fail they have huge uh, amount of cash flows they have huge amount of uh, business and uh, at the same time there is a lot of confidence in the investors that this is not the first time that these companies are going through such a cycle these companies have been around for 50 60 80 years so these companies have mostly seen a lot of depressions a lot of recessions a lot of uh, these uh, uh, macroeconomic conditions which are not favorable uh, to the overall economy and they have survived so there is a very good chance that when a company has survived in the past it will continue to survive in the present as well and because of this these companies the sh- share prices are relatively less volatile these companies are also financially sound as i mentioned that these companies have been doing well they have been in existence for a long time so their balance sheets are relatively strong they have a regular dividend payout if you look at all the three stocks that i have mentioned here these companies are uh, dividend paying companies in order to understand why most blue chip stocks end up paying dividends you have to clearly see that what happens in a company with the money that they make so any company which has a net income positive net income it can use that money in three possible ways one it can reinvest the money into its own company and uh, fuel its growth the second way is that the company can buy back its own shares and return value to the shareholders and the third way is that they can pay out a cash component to the existing shareholders via a dividend now for blue chip stocks by definition these companies are already very very big so they have captured a huge market share already so a high growth is not possible for them so these companies do not need to invest huge amounts to fuel their growth when the income that they make is not to be used for growth purposes the only other ways are buy back buying back shares or to uh, pay out the dividends to the shareholders so a lot of these companies choose the dividend path that they return money to their shareholders 
in terms of dividends that is why most blue chip companies you will see end up paying dividends blue chip companies also satisfy one more condition that the stocks are highly liquid so there is a huge volume of trading in tens of millions of shares that happens on the stocks of these companies on a daily basis and why is this happening because blue chip companies are huge companies with good balance sheets good track records and relatively less volatility so it is not just the retail investors who are interested in investing into these companies these companies satisfy the conditions for a lot of hedge funds mutual funds pension funds to uh, uh, act as investment vehicles for these funds as well a lot of these funds for example pension funds they don't want to invest too aggressively they want to invest in more stable stocks which have a continuous payout in terms of dividends or a very stable return they don't want to risk the money into uh, aggressive into an aggressive portfolio and a combination of blue chip companies actually reduces the beta on the portfolio so beta is the overall vol volatility of the portfolio and so it forms an ideal kind of an investment for institutional money so when you have both institutional and retail money going into any stock obviously the trading volumes are going to be high and hence the liquidity in the stock is going to be very very high this liquidity in the stock also gets extended to the options liquidity so if you look at options of these companies any of these blue chip companies the options volumes are also very high for these companies and finally because these companies are big they are they they are kind of the market leaders they have captured a huge uh, amount of the market share so it obviously makes sense to increase include these companies into the indexes so in us markets if you see there are three primary indexes there are more indexes as well but the main three indexes are your dow jones the nasdaq and the s&p 500 so you will see that most of these blue chip companies are part of the uh, indexes or inversely if i want to uh, tell you you can look at any of the indexes and the top companies i would not say that s p 500 all 500 companies are blue chip companies because that's a big number but if you look at the dow jones 30 it's just a, a combination of 30 stocks and all those 30 stocks will be blue chip companies same thing with nasdaq 100 uh, you can take off uh, some of the companies which have very high valuations just because they possibly can have a very high growth companies which have existed for a long time on the nasdaq also will be blue chip companies same holds true for S&P 500 as well. So uh, these companies become part of the index because the very purpose of the index is to have companies represented from each and every sector, from each and every industry, which are market leaders and which can represent that particular sector and industry. And blue chip companies satisfy this condition perfectly. So now we come to the extremely important question that are blue chip companies a foolproof investment? Blue chip companies are considered to be a good investment most of the times but this is a word of caution that i wanted to call out that when you are analyzing to invest in a blue chip company the analysis should not be different from analyzing any other company this is because i have given two examples here lehman brothers and uh, enron and both of these companies are blue chip companies in fact they were giants in their sector and all of a sudden these companies went bankrupt and so if anybody had invested money into these companies they lost all of their capital so can something go wrong with blue chip companies definitely things can go wrong with blue chip companies and there could be multiple reasons for this for example uh, in in case of enron it was actually a, a fraudulent practice of uh, reporting the numbers in a in a wrong way uh, you, therefore the accounting standards were not being followed so it could be something where things were not visible to the analysts to the investors to the general public because the executives of the company were not releasing that information accurately uh, in case of lemon brothers it was uh, a highly levered exposure to the subprime market which caused uh, their downfall so a lot of things can go wrong because of the macroeconomic conditions because of something specific to an industry and especially with technology companies so the moment uh, the digital cameras came into picture kodak took a big hit because kodak failed to adopt into the digital uh, camera space immediately there was a lot of competition and they continued to uh, focus on their uh, old technology of uh, creating negatives and so any companies which have uh, an involvement of technology can immediately lose a lot of their business share so you have to keep all these things in mind a recent example that i can give is the example of electric vehicles so if you look at any automobile companies they are all uh, in a race to be the first ones 
to produce electric vehicles and why is that because there is a market shift that going forward the way of uh, selling vehicles is going to be electric vehicles so traditional companies which have been selling uh, the non electric vehicles they are going to get left behind uh, eventually so companies which will adopt the the new technology which will adapt to the new market scenario that there is a huge demand for electric vehicles now people do not want to buy uh, diesel and gasoline vehicles rather they want to be buying electric vehicles those companies will survive and they will continue to do well whereas other companies which fail to follow the trend will be left behind and eventually they will uh be shut down or they will substantially lose a huge amount of their market capitalization so all these trends have to be taken into account even when you are investing in blue chip companies because a blue chip company which is a blue chip company today may not be a blue chip company sometime down the line because of uh, changes in technology because of macroeconomic conditions or because of something specifically going wrong at the company itself so that was all i wanted to cover with regards to blue chip companies and blue chip stocks these are good investment opportunities but you should again analyze these companies just like you would analyze any other company so it doesn't matter if it's a growth company or a blue chip company the analysis has to be done and always the risk management rules all the cushions that i talk about creating in trading and investing they should always be applied because there's one rule and if you watch that video you would still remember it that i always say that in in the markets if you want to be successful you need to remember that when things can go wrong they will actually go wrong it's just a matter of time so if you feel that once you invest into blue chip companies nothing will ever go wrong no every company has a bad time and sometimes these companies cannot come out of those bad times and they end up filing for bankruptcies so we have to do our due diligence and make sure that we are investing in the right companies and we preserve our capital at all costs if you like the video please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so Please share it with your family and friends. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comments section, and I will definitely respond to you. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you for your time.